the humble chip. It's so delicious, but not easy to perfect. When you're making them at home, I'm going to show you a little trick to get them just right. What I've got here is a couple of different types of potatoes. These are just brushed potatoes. Actually, the variety is creme royale. Um, it's a really nice one to fry. You can either peel them, and then what I always do is just I sort of turn it into a box, if that makes any sense. I cut around it and just even up the sides so you, you don't have too much of inconsistency when you actually are cutting them. So I cut through it like that and the same again there. I don't throw this away because you can use these little off cuts to thicken a soup or to, to use in another way in the kitchen. Um, and then when it comes to cutting them, you just go down and again. And then I have these beautiful, consistent, shaped and sized chips. That if you're going to leave the skin on, do the same thing. Just go ahead and just sort of trim up the edges of the potato so it looks more like a rectangle than, than an oval. Like that. And then you can go ahead and cut the desired thickness. The thinner you cut the chips, the crispier they'll get. They'll also absorb more oil, so the thicker they are, the healthier they are. What you do next is a little surprising. You're going to cook them in water first, OK? They're going to be cooked in boiling water, which I have right here, for about two minutes, and then we take them out, dry them, and then fry them. The reason for doing that is they absorb less oil and it allows the outside to go beautiful and crispy, where if we threw them straight into the oil, eventually they'd go a little soggy. I'm going to cheat right now. I've already done some. If you have a look at these, I've got three different varieties, really. So I've got some really thick ones, some here that are a little thinner, and then, of course, these little guys, these little shoestrings. Now, really important, you don't get your oil too hot, but you need to get it hot enough. So you have to get it to 190 degrees or 375 Fahrenheit. Don't overfill the pot. You only want to fill it about halfway because the water in the potato and the water on the outside of the potato will react to the oil, so it will bubble up. So if your oil's too high, there's a chance it'll bubble over. I've got a little thermometer that I stick in the side. If you don't have one of those, here's how you do it. You just drop one potato in, still hold it. See how that took a few seconds to start bubbling? It shouldn't. It should almost happen instantly. And that's because my oil isn't quite hot enough yet. It's probably about 180 at the moment, and I need it to be 190. Now, my oil's at 190 degrees or 375, so I'm going to put my potatoes in. It's always a good idea just to put a couple in to start off, and you'll see how those potatoes are going to react to the oil, and you don't want it to be too crazy and bubble over. You can see it's quite fierce, so imagine if we'd filled that oil right up, there's a chance it would bubble over. So I can't emphasise enough, be sure to fry safely. OK. And they're going to take a good four minutes or so before they go golden, delicious and crispy. At the start, they'll sink right to the bottom, which is normal. And then after a couple of minutes, you'll see some of the moisture has fried out of the potato and it's naturally gotten a little lighter in weight and it will rise up and it'll actually float on the top of the oil. So our chips have been in for about three or four minutes. You can see they're floating on the top. They've gone beautiful and golden brown. The temperature, of course, drops when you put your chips in. If you keep your eye on it, it should come all the way back up to where it was, which it has. So I'm going to pull these ones out, and then what I'm going to do is a little experiment. I'm going to cook the slightly thinner chips and see how they hold up. And then I'm going to cook these little shoestring fries and see the difference there as well. Now, you'll notice the reaction of the oil to the slightly thinner fries is a little more intense, and that's because there's just more surface area on the chips. When we come to do the shoestring fries, it's even stronger. It really will, you know, cause your oil to, to bubble up. So just put a few in to start off and then a few more and make sure that you're, uh, you're being careful while you're frying. So you'll see these are now floating. They've gone nice and golden. The reason I've put them onto a wire rack is because I want the air to circulate underneath them. The last thing that you want your chips to do is to steam. So make sure you put them on a wire rack so the air can circulate around them. Once you get those out, time for the shoestrings. I'm just going to put just a few of these on at a time. There's quite a reaction between the oil and the water content of the shoestring fry, so don't put too many in at once. All I do when, I, uh, come to, when it comes time to seasoning the chips is I just hit them with a little bit of sea salt. I'm going to do a bit of a test 
on my big ones here, the first ones that we cook, these are the big thick ones. Mm. Delicious and crispy on the outside. Beautiful and fluffy potato on the inside, which is what I love about them. Let's try the next size down. These are mine. Super crispy, really tasty. I think they're the perfect size. So once the potatoes have had a minute or two, you can pick them up. Here, I'm gonna serve a trio of chips. Yeah, <laughs> really thick middle, and then of course, last of all of the shoestrings. These little skinny chips, they absorb a lot more oil, so if you're watching your weight, these certainly aren't the ones to choose. Now, I've used canola oil. You, you basically want to use any neutral flavoured vegetable oil. Serve those last of all. They're super crispy. They're really delicious, but they're just not quite as good as the other ones for me. Anyway, however you like to eat your chips, now you know how to make them.